Hello everyone, this is Eric Maxwell from Privacera. Thank you for joining me for our series on Apache Ranger. In this installment, we're going to walk through the Apache Ranger user interface to familiarize you with the various sections and features that are available there. This is the login screen for Apache Ranger. We're going to log in as the admin user so that we've got full access to the UI. When you log in, you'll notice a few things. First off is a bar across the top that has the various sections of the user interface. Access Manager is going to be where we create our policies. These are going to be the things that control access to the various resources that are integrated with our Apache Ranger. The Audit section is where we can view audit trails for both data resource accesses as well as administrative tasks. You can create security zones within Apache Ranger to segment the data resources. And then within settings, you can create or manage users and groups as well as permissions for those users and groups within the user interface. So let's start with the Access Manager. Access management is divided into two categories, resource-based policies and tag-based policies. For resource-based policies, those are what you would expect. We have a data resource out there like a Hive table or an HBase table, maybe an HDFS directory that we want to create access policies around. Tag-based policies are policies that use metadata tags on the data resources to determine access controls. So let's start with the resource-based policies. The service manager interface here shows you all the different services that are defined in this particular Apache Ranger ecosystem. You can see that for some, some service types, we only have one service defined for this Hadoop HDFS, for example. And you can see for another one, we have multiple services defined. So you might want to create different service definitions if you need to logically segment policies across different service installations. For example, if I have two Kafka clusters and I don't wish to commingle their policies, then I would want to create two separate service definitions to manage those policies. And the plugins that synchronize policies from Ranger use the service definition to determine which policies to synchronize now. You'll see up here in the top right hand corner, we have the ability to import and export policies. When we select export, we can select which service types and which service names to export uh, into a JSON format. You might do this if you need to copy policies from one Ranger installation to another Ranger installation or to back them up in case of some type of failure. Likewise, you can import those policies. This is where you would select the JSON file that got created by the export to import policies into this Ranger installation. You have the ability to select the security zone up here. I don't currently have any security zones defined in this particular instance, but this is how you would drill into that security zone to get to the policies that have been segmented out. <clears throat> in order to create policies, what we do is we click into a service definition. So let's look into the Hive service definition. You'll see within Hive, we have different types of policies that we can create. Access policies, which allow or deny access to particular data resources like Hive tables. We have masking policies that we can create, which determine how to redact or mask data that comes out of Hive based on user uh, permissions or group memberships. And we can also create row level filters that will filter the data coming from a Hive table based on access policies. So when you create a policy, you click the add new policy button up here and you get a blank template. So you can see here, you give it a policy name, you specify the Hive database, etc., And then you can add that policy to the list. You can also edit policies by clicking on the edit button here. That allows you to update an existing policy instead of creating a new policy. You can also navigate within the, the Ranger UI using the breadcrumbs that are up here at the top. 
If you need to edit your service definition for some reason, for example, if it's not working, you can click on the edit button here. And this is where you would specify the connectivity on how to get to certain things. So for this HDFS instance, for example, I specify the name node ah. URL, et cetera, et cetera. For tag-based policies, you would click into the tag-based policy link. Tag-based policies also have service definitions. You can see here we have two different tag-based policy definitions. To create a tag-based policy, you would click into that service definition, the same as we did for resource-based policies. And you can create access policies based on tags, and you can also create masking policies based on tags. Now, when you're creating a tag-based policy, you have the options to select which components this applies to. And this will be a definition of all of the components that are available within this particular Ranger ecosystem. You can get a report of the policies that exist out there today in your Ranger ecosystem. You can identify all of the policies that are there based on the service definitions and the service types. Let's go over to the audit section now. Audit is an important part of security because it allows you to see what has happened within your systems and within your ecosystem. So we have different types of audits. We have access audits. Access audits are when a user or service goes to access a particular data resource. It will either be allowed or denied and there will be a governing policy that controls that data access. So within this, you can see, obviously we have a lot of allow results here. You can also do searches. So if I wanted to see something like result was denied, I can do a search based on that to determine who's been trying to access data resources that they're not allowed to. And you can see there are different ways that you can filter these results and search through them to get to the information that you're looking for. Administrative audits show things like policy creation, policy changes, etc. These are things that you would need to audit to understand when data accesses were added, updated, etc. Login sessions are also audited so that you can see when users have logged into the user interface. You can see here there was a wrong password entered by the admin user, or you can see the IP address that they came from, et cetera, what browser they were using. So you can understand who's logging into the user interface and what they're doing. There are two audit trails that cover plugins. So the first one is a listing of events that have happened for the plugins, synchronizing policies down to the, the local cache and the plugin. So you can see here, policies have been synchronized to Yarn several times, to Atlas, Kafka, et cetera. So we have a list of when the policy set was last synchronized for that particular service. There's also an audit that shows all the different plugins that have registered themselves with the Ranger server and what their current status is. You can see their last update, the last download times, et cetera, uh, for policies, resource policies, and tag policies. The last audit trail that we have here is the user sync audit trail. User synchronization is something that can be set up for Ranger to pull user and group information from, for example, an LDAP directory or an Active Directory, uh, Microsoft Active Directory service. This greatly reduces the amount of overhead for, uh, for getting users and group membership information into Ranger for creating the policies. This audit trail shows that for the last unit user sync, how many users or groups were new, how many were modified, when the event occurred, etc. So we briefly discussed security zones. Security zones are a way to segment data resources into groups and then delegate responsibility for those to other users. So for example, if I had a set of Hive tables that belonged to my finance group and I didn't want to commingle their policies with another group's, I could add those tables to a finance security zone and then delegate administration for those tables and the policies governing them to the finance team. In the settings section, we have two sub tabs, users and groups. 
In Apache Ranger 2.0, there's also a roles group that shows up here where you can create roles and assign users and groups to the roles, assign roles to roles, and then you assign privileges to the roles. So full role-based access control has been added into Ranger 2.0. In this particular user interface, we have users and groups. The users shows all of the users that exist within Ranger that you can create policies on. And it shows you a few things about those users. For example, their role within the Ranger user interface. So we have the admin user that we're currently logged in as is an admin within the user interface, and it's an internal user, meaning it was not synchronized from any external source. We have several users that show up here as external. These are users that have been synchronized via the Ranger user sync process, the audit trail that we looked at just a moment ago. And you can see the groups that they belong to. So those groups have also been synchronized into the Ranger ecosystem. Likewise, we can see all the groups that have been uh, that have been synchronized, and we can get a list of users that belong to all of those groups as well. So here, for example, the Activity Analyzer HDFS and two individual users are belong to the HDFS group. We can add a new group manually, should we need to do so. And then we can set visibility here for groups to be visible or hidden within the user interface. So that concludes our overview of the Ranger UI. If you'd like to understand how Privacera is extending Ranger to integrate with native cloud services, please visit us at privacera.com.